Hi, everyone. Uh, as Simon said, I'm the editor of OnlineMarketplaces.com. Um, it's a job that basically means I read and I write an awful lot about real estate portals, and I deal a lot with what journalists call narrative. And narrative's kind of an odd thing, right? Um, it just basically means what people are writing about you and the sentiment behind it, right? Um, so today, the idea is to talk a little bit about um, my experience of narrative in the real estate portal industry. Uh, we've all heard or we all know the narrative over the last two and a half years of real estate markets in general, which is there's no inventory and housing is really expensive, right? It's, it's a narrative that we're all very familiar with, I'm sure. I wanted to see if there was kind of a similar succinct narrative for real estate portals um, that coincides with the COVID-19 pandemic. So I actually started my job a week before the pandemic, a week before the lockdown, and I wanted to see kind of how the narrative had uh, evolved in that time, let's say. Um, so... Big green button. Big green button not working. <laughs> Nice one. Um, so as it said, 10,000 data points. Um, this was a lovely video scrolling through 10,000 data points. Um, it's now an image. Um, between things like revenue, profit, average revenue per agent, number of agents, things like that, um, I, c I sat down in, July, in June, sorry, in June, in January, collected it all. It was incredibly tedious, but it's been absolutely worth it because there's perhaps the most comprehensive data set anyone has ever collected on real estate portals. Um, it's useful not just because I get to present to you, but because it informs a lot of the content that we produce on onlinemarketplaces.com. Um, now, at this point, people would normally be starting to give like a spoiler and, you know, what's to talk about, things like that. I will keep, I'll give you a spoiler. The spoiler is there is no narrative. It's really unfortunate. I tried really hard to make there be a narrative to present to you all today. There isn't one. Um, and it's maybe even more interesting that there isn't a clear narrative. Uh, and over the next, I think, 11 slides, I'm going to show you why there isn't a narrative. Basically, there's no narrative um, because to people like me who don't actually work in the industry, we have these preconceived ideas about the real estate portal industry. And as much as real estate portals will look the same, they're just not. So let's dive in. Let's look at some of these uh, myths or fallacies that I found when trying to create this narrative. First, um, that's a nice little graph. 2020 was a disaster for portal companies. Um, I've read, or I used to read, an awful lot kind of hinting that 2020 was a disaster for real estate portal companies. And looking at this graph, yeah, it kind of is. Average revenue growth of all portal operating companies took an enormous dip in the year 2020, as you can all see. Um, but I built this graph. I built about 15, 25 of these graphs with all the data. And this one surprised me the most. 2020, this is the average growth, remember. It's still around 5% growth of all of these companies. There's about, there's about 30 companies that declare um, their, their numbers publicly. And there's maybe another two or three that aren't public, but that still give me their numbers because they're nice people. Anyone else out there? wants to give me their numbers, please, please, you're welcome to do so. Um, I thought this was an, a complete anomaly. 2020, real estate portals grew in 2020, 5% on average. And so I, I, I thought that can't be right. I tried to dig into the numbers. Um, and it's right. There's companies like, well, there's, there's ones like Mercado Libre, which I think grew something like 70%, 73%. Um, and you can go, OK, that's an exception. Um, but there's other ones that's like on the market in the UK, that grew something like, in terms of revenue, grew like 60% in that time. Um, and there's, there's other ones, there's, I think there's Amin, Infocasas, shout out to Infocasas, wherever you are. Um, and it, it just didn't fit with the narrative, what the data was telling me. And this is another interesting slide, although there are caveats with it. Average profit of all portal operating companies, this is post-tax profit, um, slightly more in 2020. Now, like I said, there are caveats. A lot of you portal operating companies out there, you don't want people like me to find out how much money you make and compare you and put you on a slide for a presentation for your other portals, and that's fair enough. Um, so this is just the companies that it kind of makes sense to compare 
right? So caveats are plenty here, but the point remains. 2020 really wasn't that bad. So granted, if you work at Rightmove, you would have seen your post-tax profits fall, I think it was 36% in 2020, which in terms of Rightmove in that context, it's a disaster, yeah. But they still made, um, to use them as an example, they still made something like $123 million post-tax profit in 2020. So the point I'm trying to say is that this narrative of 2020 was a disaster, well, no, not really. Um, I can't remember who, was, who it was that said this yesterday, but real estate portals is a really good business to be in. It's very profitable. And when it's not quite as profitable, there's this narrative of disaster, which I don't think is merited necessarily. Second fallacy, or myth, or narrative that needs adjusting, in my opinion. Adjacent revenue streams are going great for portals. And when I built this graph, I thought, that is a good graph. I can build a whole presentation around that graph. What you're looking at is the average revenue growth of traditional listings portal segments. So traditional listings segments is portals, marketing houses. And the average revenue growth of non-listing segments, which is anything else. It's you know, media and other mortgages, whatever, right? And that is a pretty big jump in 2019, right? I thought that, that's brilliant. I can talk all about that, except there's exceptions. Every time I built one of these graphs, there were exceptions. James is nodding his head. James, as a keen student of the industry, will know that in 2019 is when Zillow's eye buying really took off, right? And that was the huge... Um, anomaly that changed that graph. So I took it out, Zillow Homes was taken out, and the graph looks very different. But now what stands out isn't the yellow line all of a sudden, it's the burgundy, we'll call it burgundy, burgundy line. 60 something percent revenue growth in that time. And so you go, all right, fine. I'll go back into the numbers, I'll get all the uh, outliers, and I'll, I'll take them out and we'll do it again, except there are a lot of outliers, and when there are a lot, I say a lot of outliers, there are a lot of companies with huge numbers. There was, um, I think, Property Guru of Vietnam grew 560% in revenue in that time, apparently. So I took that out, but then I saw the other ones. There were, again, Infocasas, shout out to them, it was like 114%, Zameen, 89%. Um, so that, that one kind of holds up, and it's kind of interesting. And there's another presentation for another time on. Um, growth in maturing markets, developing markets versus mature markets. Um, another presentation for another day. But um, yeah, the point is, these this, this like adjacencies, getting closer to the transaction, I just want it adjusted. I want the narrative adjusted, right? Um, we did a study in April on adjacent revenue streams that real estate portals get into. And they were kind of, for me, there were three conclusions from it. Firstly, there isn't a lot of data. It's a rubbish conclusion, I know, but yeah. Secondly, there isn't a lot of data because um, a lot of these real estate porters, when they declare their numbers, they lump everything in together. So your um, adjacent revenues, they just get lumped in with your um, media and other, or they get lumped in with, with listings. And there's no way, they don't break it out, they don't let me see it. The third conclusion was, by and large, real estate portals are they're pragmatists when it comes to adjacent revenue streams. What they do is they all just build a landing page, and that's the product. They build a landing page, get a lead for a third party, thank you very much. Very few of them have the guts to really get closer to the transaction and then break it out in their reporting. Um, what you're looking at here are two slides from that report. These ones up here, so Domain Consumers, um, Property Guru, Data and Fintech, Zillow Mortgages, Sian Mortgage, these are the ones that, that actually break out what they're doing to get closer to their transaction. And as a percentage of their overall revenue in 2021, none of them are very big. Right? And are they getting bigger over time? Well, yeah, caveats again, there's not that much data, but it doesn't really look like they are getting much bigger. It doesn't seem like these adjacent revenue streams that I read so much about in my day-to-day -day work, it doesn't seem like they're really um, changing things. So I'm saying let's just adjust the narrative a little bit. I'm not saying that they're not the future, the, you know, the golden egg, but let's just adjust the narrative. This one was probably the most interesting one. 
Uh, I, before I worked um, as a journalist for OnlineMarketplaces.com, I worked for a company uh, in the industry for which traffic was the most important metric. I'm not going to tell you the name of the company. You can all look on my LinkedIn if you want. But traffic was the absolute be all and end all. I used to go into work every day, and the question was, how's the traffic, right? Um, now this, what you're seeing here, average traffic growth of all real estate portal companies over time. By the way, traffic is the only metric that real estate portal companies seem keen to divulge to journalists, um, probably because it's the easiest one to like increase. Um, so that, that pink line is based on quite a lot of data. Uh, the other two lines, profit growth and revenue growth, they just they don't follow traffic growth. And this is really weird to me because I'd kind of come into the industry thinking traffic is the most important metric. Nope. And it's not, it's not just me that thinks this is odd. Um, I've read a few kind of industry outsiders who think the same thing. So this quote on the bottom here is from uh, an investment analysis of Zillow. If I was in charge of executing monetization at Zillow, I would salivate given how lucrative I know it as in the traffic monetization would be. I hope somebody there wakes up. Just an interesting graph. Traffic, not necessarily that important anymore. Another interesting graph, and another graph that I tried to pick holes in. I tried to find the outliers, but there weren't any. Average listings volume growth has gone down. As I said at the start, that's part of the narrative of housing markets at the moment. Um, but average revenue growth has kind of, it just doesn't follow it. The, the two don't, you know, they don't follow each other. Interesting, right? Kind of, as an outsider, you would be forgiven for thinking the more houses you have to sell, the more money you're going to make. Not really, except there are always exceptions. What you're looking at here is uh, are some metrics from 99 Acres, which is a real estate portal in India. And as you can see, uh, the listings drop significantly, the paid listings drop significantly, and the money drops significantly, like a quarter later, right? So there are exceptions. Uh, which leads me on to the next fallacy, at least for me, when I was trying to construct a narrative as someone who you know, doesn't have the 15 years experience as a CEO of a portal company. Um, real estate portals are all the same. Now, I looked at about 650 real estate portals for a study that we did last year on you know, tools that real estate portals have, right? And I can tell you, having looked at all of them, that they are very, very similar. They all look very similar. Um, and they all do the same thing, right? They all map, they market houses. They're not, so, they're not the same. I'm going to tell you that, no problem. So one of the things I did to try and construct a narrative was I put these real estate portal operating companies into buckets, into categories. Um, two questions. Do they operate just doing real estate? And do they operate in more than one country? And this graph here is one of the original 25 that I made, which is um, one country real estate portal specialists and their average revenue growth, and the revenue growth of one country diversified businesses. Now, there are two problems with this graph. Um, the data is fine. The problems are the categories. Um, Yandex is the biggest search operator in Russia. It's like the Google of Russia. And it's a very, very, very different company to, for example, Alma Media, who are from Finland. They're not nearly as big. They do lots of different things. It's not a very um, homogenous category, let's say. Uh, the second category I thought was quite a good category. I thought the one country real estate portal specialist is a nice uh, homogenous category to put real estate portals in to try and find some conclusions. Um, and I thought, OK, this graph clearly shows me that the one country real estate portal specialists, they recovered much quicker. That's something I can talk about. That's a narrative, except it isn't. Apples to apples comparisons are really difficult in a real estate portal country, uh, company um, industry, right? These companies are still beholden to their domestic markets, even though all 650 of them, I think there's about 800, by the way, all of them look exactly the same. They do the same, but they're not the same. They're run by very different companies, and they operate in very different markets. So this is the same graph, uh, except so that, that green line is the same as the green line that you saw in the previous slide, the one country real estate portal specialists and their, um, their revenue growth, except we've taken China out, and I've painted China in pink. 
uh, very different. Obviously, you know, with the Evergrande crisis, government policy, blah, 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 um, they've had a pretty bad couple of years, and it's still going badly for them. So I've talked a lot about myths and things that I had wrong in my head as kind of an outsider to the industry. Um, but there was one thing that was very clear and was like intuitive rather than counterintuitive, and it's this. ARPA means average revenue per agent, and it just basically means how much you charge the agents as a real estate portal company, right? Very clear. The more you charge your agents, the more money you make. Finally, something that makes sense. Um, and we're going to demonstrate how it makes sense. Uh, I used them already as an example. I'm going to use them again. Somebody else used them as an example yesterday. I'm sure somebody else later tomorrow will use them as an example again. Right move. When you say ARPA, people generally think of Rightmove, right? So this is Rightmove's uh, profit, that, oh, sorry, their revenue growth of their agents and new homes segment. I actually don't know why Rightmove bother having more than one segment. This is 95% of all of their revenue, plus. It's like 90, 96% or something of all their revenue, right? Uh, and as you can see, no surprises, goes down in 2020, goes up in 2021. Is it because they've got more agents? No. If you work at Rightmove, uh, more than likely, if you're a salesman, you're not trying to find new agents, new customers. What you're trying to do is maintain the ones you've got, right? That's absolutely flat. It's actually gone down a little bit. Is it because they've got more traffic? No, it isn't because they've got more traffic. In fact, it's kind of the, the relationship there doesn't make sense. Um, so is it because they're charging their agents more? Bingo. Yes, it is. Look at that relationship. They are charging their agents more, so they get more money. Now, I'm sure you're probably not surprised to see this graph. Um, and if you're in the world of British estate agency, this graph probably makes you angry. Um, but this is, this, at least from what the data says, this is the way. You charge your agents more money, you make more money. Not you get more traffic, you make more money. Not if you get more listings, you get more money. It's how much you charge. So for those of you who've been looking at your phones, I don't blame you. These are the takeaways from today, basically. If you were like me and you were wrong and you thought that 2020 was a complete disaster for real estate portal companies because the narrative in the media was like that, well, yeah, it wasn't good. If you compare it to other years, yeah, it was really bad. But it's still a very lucrative business to be in and there's some perspective. Um, if you thought that, well, adjacent revenue streams are great, they're the future, yeah, well, they might be. But it's kind of, at least from what the data that I have says it's a little bit too early to tell. And mostly, adjacent revenue streams are just someone builds a landing page and then they give leads to third parties, right? Uh, not that many people have really gone into the transaction and then broke it out in their reporting and made it public, unfortunately. Uh, if you were like me and you thought that the more traffic you have as a real estate portal company, the more money you'll make, nah, not so much. Not necessarily, not for modern portals. And if you thought that the more listings you have, the more money you make, same thing, same thing again. Uh, if you thought that real estate portal companies are all the same, they are absolutely not. They look the same, they do the same thing, they are not the same. If you take one thing away from everything, it's that little graph there. Average revenue per agent. If you charge your agents more, you will make more money. Obvious, I know, but that's the only thing, the only narrative that the data supported after months of me trying to make it uh, do something a little more interesting, that's the only one that the data really supports. Um, that's all I've got. If, uh, if there are any questions, I'll take them. Bruce, can we have Slido, please? Thank you. Um, thank you, Ed, for that. More traffic doesn't mean more revenues? Question mark. Uh, is, that, is that fair because most of the incumbents are already with, has a significant amount of traffic volume? So there is limited room for growth. Uh, I'd say in a word, yes. Um, I think that a lot of these portal companies in mature markets have hit a ceiling. I wrote something, uh, I can't remember what it was, around New Year about um, Scout24 and what they're trying to do now. I think they hit a ceiling. Uh, not just with their, you know, how they monetize traffic, but kind of their whole model. Um, so limited room for growth, yeah, 
It's a difficult one. It's what that guy said in the investment analysis of Zillow. Yeah, limited room for growth in as much as like what they have been doing up till now. I think there's um, a huge uh, opportunity there for people to monetize traffic a little bit better. And I think someone like Scout24 and what they've done with um, those consumer subscription products, I think that personally, I think that's the future. Okay. Perhaps another way of thinking about that is if, you, if you've been in the market for take a right move for an REA, you, you've been at, uh, where are we now, 25 years operating, you've absolutely firmly wedged yourself into the psyche of every agent and probably every consumer in a market. People realise, people being agents, have no choice but to be there. So yeah, unless, unless the traffic falls off a cliff and disappears to zero, there's an expectation on the vendor that the agent's going to put their properties on that site irrespective of the volume of traffic that goes there. Therefore, that creates the pressure to be there, which gives the power to the portal to put their prices up irrespective of the movement of traffic. Yeah, absolutely. Is there uh, a narrative that could work? There is a narrative. Um, yeah. Right move, I'm sure that business schools around the world study right move um, because I don't, I don't want to be horrible about right move, but they haven't really done anything for <laughs> years and years. And except make they, a lot of money. Except make a lot of money and make their yeah. shareholders really happy. Yes. Um, yeah, it's a perfect example of, it, I think it's the best example I've ever seen of network effects. And they do it, they do it great. Okay. Another question coming up here is uh, transaction revenue. Um, isn't it large for realtor.com if you treat um, Obsidy as uh, transaction revenue? Uh, yes. I don't treat Obsity as a transaction, really, if I'm honest. I guess it is. Um, I, had a whole I had a whole load of slides I had to cut from this about um, next-gen lead gen, although people have done talks on that much better than I have. But, I, yeah, th the answer to that is yes. I guess they have. And so is Zillow, and Zillow are um, increasing what they're doing with that as well. I think they just kicked off a whole load of people from their, uh, their standard... Um, What's it called? Their main, their main product. They kicked a load of people off to start doing what Opsity are doing. Um, so yes, is the answer to that. Um, it would be great to have a measure of some of this based on lead volumes generated. I agree. Um, give me a data, guys. Yeah. <laughs> give me a data. <laughs> that would require amazing transparency. Yeah. It on, would. On, on real efficiency. <laughs> I think, I think, but it goes back to that point. If you if you establish yourself as the brand in the market, that people have to be there. I've got to turn the electricity on, right? I don't actually have a lot of choice. Mm. I don't want to have light. I turn. I don't have electricity. You want to get leads. The problem is, if you look at, yeah, you know, I've always had this theory that if you look at the actual volume of leads generated by a lot of these portals, volumes of converted leads generated, it's not as great as it used to be because there are so many other lead sources now okay and then the problem is that they've spent 20 years convincing people that they are the major source of leads and what's the point of arguing right because yeah. there's no independent data uh, so another section that i had to cut from this was all about how real estate portals try and um bogart the narrative how they try and um there's a lot of money and effort going into persuading people like me uh to have a narrative for these real estate portals that is um, to their favor, let's say. There's a lot of narrative playing out there. Marketing. Yeah. At the end yeah, of the day. PR, a lot of PR. PR. Fantastic. Ed, thank you. We've run out of time, so nice thank you off. very much. Thanks, Simon. Excellent insights.